This is a remarkable time to be working on artificial intelligence. But as this technology advances, we understand that people are anxious about how it could change the way we live. Good news. I have good news. No, AI is not going to kill us all. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Clone Compounding, where our mission is to learn from others in order to achieve financial independence. AI is all the rage these days, so in today's video, let's look at a summary from the latest write-up from Mark Andreessen on why AI will save the world. Mark is a co-founder and general partner at the venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz, aka A16Z. He's an innovator and creator of software products used by more than a billion people. 12 years ago, he wrote a memo on why software is eating the world and his predictions certainly became true. This memo is titled, Why AI Will Save the World. The memo talks about the role AI is expected to play for the future of mankind and in particular the risks and opportunities at stake. It's a long note and this is part two of the three part video series on this memo. For part one, have a look at the description for the video link. Before we start, please smash that like button so others can find this video as well and make sure to subscribe to receive next videos on these memos. Let's continue. Takeaway 5. Will AI ruin our society? The second widely mooted AI risk is that AI will ruin our society by generating outputs that will be so harmful as to cause profound damage to humanity, even if we're not literally killed. Short version, if the murder robots don't get us, the hate speech and misinformation will. As it happens, Mark says he has had a front row seat to an analogous situation, the social media trust and safety wars. As is now obvious, social media services have been under massive pressure from governments and activists to ban, restrict, censor, and otherwise suppress a wide range of content for many years. And the same concerns of hate speech, and its mathematical counterpart, algorithmic bias and misinformation are being directly transferred from the social media context to the new frontier of AI alignment. There is no absolutist free speech position. Every country, including the United States, makes at least some content illegal. Also, there are certain kinds of content like incitements to real-world violence, that are nearly universally agreed to be off-limits, legal or not, by virtually every society. So any technological platform that facilitates or generates content, speech, is going to have some restrictions. Once a framework for restricting even egregiously terrible content is in place, for example, for hate speech, a specific hurtful word, or for misinformation, a shockingly broad range of government agencies and activist pressure groups and non-governmental entities will kick into gear and demand at ever greater levels of censorship and suppression of whatever speech they view as threatening to society and or their own personal preferences. This cycle in practice can run apparently forever. This has been cascading for a decade in social media and with only certain exceptions continues to get more fervent all the time. You should also realize that the fight over what AI is allowed to say slash generate will be even more important, by a lot, than the fight over social media censorship. AI is highly likely to be the control layer for everything in the world. How it is allowed to operate is going to matter perhaps more than anything else has ever mattered. In short, don't let the thought police suppress AI. Takeaway 6, Will AI Take All Our Jobs? The fear of job loss due to mechanization, automation, Computerization, or AI has been a recurring panic for hundreds of years, since the original onset of machinery such as the mechanical loom. Even though every new major technology has led to more jobs at higher wages throughout history, each wave of this panic is accompanied by claims that this time is different, this is the time it will finally happen, this is the technology that will finally deliver the hammer blow to human labor. And yet, it never happens. We've been through two such technology-driven unemployment panic cycles in our recent past, the outsourcing panic of the 2000s, and the automation panic of the 2010s. Notwithstanding many talking heads, pundits, and even tech industry executives pounding the table throughout both decades that mass unemployment was near, by late 2019, right before the onset of COVID, the world had more jobs at higher wages than ever in history. Nevertheless this mistaken idea will not die. And sure enough, it's back. Surely this time history won't repeat, and AI will cause mass unemployment, and not rapid economic, job, and wage growth, right? No, that's not going to happen, and in fact AI, if allowed to develop and proliferate throughout the economy, may cause the most dramatic and sustained economic boom of all time, with correspondingly record job and wage growth, the exact opposite of the fear. And here's why. 
The core mistake the automation kills job doomers keep making is called the lump of labor fallacy. This fallacy is the incorrect notion that there is a fixed amount of labor to be done in the economy at any given time, and either machines do it or people do it, and if machines do it, there will be no work for people to do. The lump of labor fallacy flows naturally from naive intuition, but naive intuition here is wrong. When technology is applied to production, we get productivity growth, an increase in output generated by a reduction in inputs. The result is lower prices for goods and services. As prices for goods and services fall, we pay less for them, meaning that we now have extra spending power with which to buy other things. This increases demand in the economy, which drives the creation of new production, including new products and new industries, which then creates new jobs for the people who were replaced by machines in prior jobs. The result is a larger economy with higher material prosperity, more industries, more products, and more jobs. But the good news doesn't stop there. We also get higher wages. This is because, at the level of the individual worker, the marketplace sets compensation as a function of the marginal productivity of the worker. A worker in a technology-infused business will be more productive than a worker in a traditional business. The employer will either pay that worker more money as he is now more productive, or another employer will, purely out of self-interest. The result is that technology introduced into an industry generally not only increases the number of jobs in the industry but also raises wages. To summarize, technology empowers people to be more productive. This causes the prices for existing goods and services to fall, and for wages to rise. This in turn causes economic growth and job growth, while motivating the creation of new jobs and new industries. If a market economy is allowed to function normally and if technology is allowed to be introduced freely, this is a perpetual upward cycle that never ends. This is the end of part 2 of Mark Andresen's thoughts on why AI will save the world. Stay tuned for part 3. Hope you enjoyed and learned from this video. Smash the like button and subscribe to receive more videos on memos and write-ups from top investors.